The Love God is the ninth episode of the second season of Gravity Falls and 29th overall. In it, Mabel tries cheering Robbie up by setting him up with Tambri with some love potion. Meanwhile, there's a concert going on. Shenanigans ensue. This is the first of a couple episodes that was co-written by Josh Weinstein, one of the best writers on The Simpsons. The episode begins with the teens and the mystery twins skygazing in the graveyard, as you do, and it turns out a music festival is near. Woodstick, which is a reference to Woodstock. The most famous musical festival of all time, you've probably heard it before referenced as the summer of 69. Music by Scarves and Doors, Wood Grain on Everything, The Love God, Handlebar Bros. All those we see in the episode and they're very alternative rock, organ music. But we also have Ordinary Vegans, Creepy Nerd, Wizard Mode, DJ OK, Edgy Triangle, I guess that's Bill, Mom Jeans, <laughs> Lawrence Plus the Bicycle, Barantola, Ampersand, Dracula Weekday, Boys to Infants, 280, Boston, Massachusetts, and No Raising Pinball. The group finds Robbie in a grave crying about Wendy because he's clearly not moved on. What? I've totally moved on. When you kiss me and say you love me, it makes me feel so... <laughs> Mabel wants to make Robbie feel better. Zeus is still in a long-distance relationship with the real girl from Zeus and the Real Girl. This episode we learn that Robbie's full name is Robbie Stacy Valentino, and his parents are funeral directors and are super nice and happy, showing that Robbie really is just an edgy poser. Okay, that's funny and relatable. Even though literally last episode we saw young Robbie and he didn't look like that. Which in the commentary Alex kind of explains as say Robbie kind of builds up this persona of him being cool and edgy to impress Wendy. On Robbie's door we see posters for his band Robbie V and the Tombstones from all the way back in Fight Fighters. I guess now we know what the V stands for and we still don't know who the Tombstones are. Despite the door swinging inwards, we see no detail on the inside, but we do see tons of detail in Robbie's room. He owns a pet spider, because of course he does. He has acoustic guitar, he's got a drum that he's kicked in. On the wall it says, I cry in the rain, so my tears cannot be seen. Hey. hey. Of his explosion mushrooms under a black right, he's got an electric guitar. He's got a very anime-inspired drawing of him and Wendy, because of course he does. I imagine Robbie probably watches Naruto for Sasuke, Hitalia, and he probably hasn't seen Evangelion or Death Note, but probably acts like he does. He's got a dartboard with Dipper's face on it, with a knife and a shuriken in it, because he's insane. We see a skeleton hoodie from Summer Ween, what looks like an Xbox, and he wants none of Mabel's help. Mabel makes a little diorama out of trash and some figurines out of wood like Pacifica, one of her friends, Free Pizza Guy, Lazy Susan, a random cat, Wendy, Toby Determined, Chandra Hernandez, and a bunch of others, even including the multi-bear from Dipper vs. Manliness. Mabel ships Dipper and Candy, now Bolita and Stan. She tries pairing Tambri and Robbie, but it doesn't really work out. But then the love god appears. He's a cherub apparently inspired by Mike Hernandez, and in the commentary apparently revealing that Nate and Lee were one of his friends in high school. The love god played by John DiMaggio, who also plays Manly Dan and Bender and like a thousand other characters, is a cherub that has the power to make anything fall in love. Even a European badger, which is in North America for some reason, and a snake. This episode has since been very controversial because... This elderly woman who gets with this guy was originally supposed to get with a girl, but Disney censored it. And the Love God's necklace, which has a boy and a girl symbol, was originally supposed to be a trans symbol, but Disney censored it. Another controversy comes with Tamri and Robbie, but we'll get to it later. Mabel steals some of the Love God's potion and gets them to get together. And yeah, this episode was basically made just to make fun of shipping. 
because Mabel started shipping because she thought it would be cute and didn't really take into consideration what everyone else's opinion would be. So the friend group starts kind of fracturing and hating each other. And it's revealed that Thompson was basically the glue holding the friendship together and allowing everyone to pick on him, which is both sad and also extremely realistic for friend groups to be this fragile. At Woodstock, we see some members of several times picking at the trash, and also the agents in the far background making up for not being in the last episode. Blinking, you'll miss it, we can also see Blind Ivan from the Blind Eye Society. We see Tyler Q. Biker hanging out with the Love God, and Mabel steals an anti-love potion to try and fix stuff. It's also revealed she doesn't like country music, which Christian Shaw thought was kind of weird, but, you know, modern country music is terrible, so I completely understand. We see that old-timey salesman, blind eye guy, drinks some hippie tea. What hippie tea is, is probably illegal. Love God uses a potion to summon all of... Mabel's past crushes, including Norman from Taurus Trap, Gabe from Sock Opera, Mermondo from The Deep End, several times from Boy Crazy, the Do You Like Me, Yes, Definitely, Absolutely guy from Taurus Trap, and the guy on the $10 bill, who for non-Americans, or just dumb Americans, is Alexander Hamilton, the first Secretary of the Treasury. Mabel having a crush on him was a joke only in the unaired pilot, which we'll get to at the end of the series. And this is long before the musical Hamilton was popular. It's also a little weird that Gideon's not here. I guess because she got over him, but she also got over several times in Norman, so why are they here? I kind of hate this part of the episode because she already dealt with this in Society of the Blind Eye. It was kind of implied she fully moved on from them at this point. Either way, throughout the episode, Stan's been basically acting like Disney and faking an interest in something to try and sell it. You're being hot air balloons, and yes, this is the episode that has I Eat Kids Stan Balloon on Fire, which is the best part of the episode. Another thing controversial about this episode is Mabel just kind of leaves Robbie and Tambry drugged under the love potion because she thinks they're happy together. And it's super weird because the love potion is real and this is not their own free will falling in love with each other. What the hell? Mabel outfit check. She wears a rainbow sweater with little heart earrings. Showing that one day along with this terrain that they'll probably grow up to paint Warhammer miniatures to look like sugar and candy. And during the credits they have a blue sweater with an apple on it with a little math symbol meaning pie. So it's an apple pie sweater. Our code is incredibly hard to see. Almost spitefully so by the animators. To the point when even Alex Hirsch has a hard time seeing it. But the code is a goat and a pig. With Mabel's marrying Gompers the goat and Waddles. This being the first episode we actually hear the name Gompers out loud. And basically the only time when Gompers is relevant. Our code is I eat kids. Our pages, at the play or at the fair, I always see them standing there, dressed in black, they're on my lawn, but when I turn my head, they're gone. Referring to the agents, I guess this is making up for their not appearing in the last episode. This episode is, uh, it's definitely hilarious, probably one of the funniest episodes of Gravity Falls, with the IE Kids balloon and Robbie's morbid but fun parents. It's an episode that kind of needed to happen to give closure to Robbie. But it is definitely weird that they just kind of left him with Tambury against either of their will. And I know that in Journal 3 they kind of retconned it so the love potion only lasted a few hours and it became a genuine relationship. But that's just some retconning, backtracking bullshit. And they didn't really have the time or honestly care to have a storyline kind of like Star Versus where they were forced together by destiny or whatever and then they break it just to fall in love genuinely. And I think the episode could also work better if say the love god was just like a Stan-esque con man who was like faking it and all of his love potions were just colored water and Robbie and Tambri got together genuinely without any potions needed. But as is, this is the lowest rated episode of the second season, and it sort of deserves it. 5 out of 10. 
Yeah, the cemetery used to be fun. Now it's just depressing. 